question. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Zekin, and I am an undergraduate archaeology and history of art student at Koch University in Turkey. And this will be my first ever presentation in an academic conference. Therefore, I am very thrilled and excited to share my presentation with you, which is uh, titled, uh, as you just mentioned. Um, I am very interested in heritage studies, and I started my investigation as part of my Anatolian archaeology course this semester. And I would like to emphasize that my research is in the preliminary stage compared to some masters and PhD presenters who were very advanced in their studies. And I hope to develop it more in the future. Therefore, your feedback and comments will be very valuable for me. This is the outline of my presentation. First of all, I will start with the brief history and the features of the site for those of you who is not familiar with the site and continue with the problem of the first temple narrative then continue with the first, second, and the third waves of popularity in the public outreach and discuss the inclusive public outreach strategies and conclude with the final remarks. Okay, starting with the history, um, Göbekli Tepe is located in Şanlıurfa province in the southeastern part of Turkey. The site has been known since 1963 uh, and German Archaeological Institute has been carrying out archaeological research and excavations in cooperation with the uh, Museum of Shannur for the local museum since 1995. The site was newly inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2018. And you can see the excavation area right now uh, here located in the, in, in the mound. And the excavations continue today and they have exposed three pre-pottery Neolithic A and Pre-Potter Neolithic B levels, which dated to around 9,600 to uh, 8,000 BCE. The site uh, is characterized with monumental oval buildings with uh, anthropomorphic T-shaped limestone pillars. And the main level has four rounded enclosures, A, B, C, D, with 10 to 15 in diameters. Uh, in these structures, over 40 pillars uh, have been found, which are arranged in two central ones and the others are around them. Many pillars, uh, are decorated mostly with animal reliefs and sometimes with high reliefs. Animals are depicted from a wide range of species. One can easily see foxes, snakes, sheep, lions, boars, scorpions, several types of birds, and so on. And here in the map, you can see the distribution, uh, current distribution of the sites with the T-shaped pillars. Um, the large pillars uh, are so far known, only known uh, from, from Göbekli Tepe, but now there are several sites uh, that show uh, simul simul uh, similar uh, pillar types, such as Sefer Tepe, Karahan Tepe, Hamzan Tepe, are known to have similar pillars. Uh, but right now, there are no excavation work has been carried, carried out so far, uh, because the attention is focused on Göbekli Tepe and the other sites are uh, protected for further uh, investigation. After geomagnetic survey in Göbekli Tepe, more than 10 large enclosures uh, could be located. Uh, in the geomagnetic map, and some more can be expected, as four enclosures, as I mentioned, are under excavation. In total, a minimum of 20 enclosures seem to exist in the site. Uh, at every enclosure, a number of 12 megalithic pillars can be expected, so in total, more than 200 pillars can be calculated, uh, which indicates a huge investment of labor, uh, which require the organization of that labor, and therefore also a level of social complexity, which was able to organize that effort also. Okay, uh, to con continue with the first temple narrative, uh, from its discovery onwards, the interpretation of Göbekli Tepe has centered around the terms special purpose buildings, sanctuaries, or even temples. And naturally, this line of interpretation has been called into question. It is indeed quite challenging to use a rather strictly defined historical term and complex spiritual concepts to describe the material remains of the prehistoric times. Cults, rituals, and ultimately religion are concepts often cited but rarely defined by archaeologists. So uh, we should be very careful about using these concepts. And recently, some archaeologists challenged this existence of pure domestic or ritual structures for the Neolithic, arguing that archaeologists tend to impose modern Western distinctions of sacred versus profane, non-sacred, on prehistory, while anthropology, uh, in most cases, shows these spheres can be inseparably interconnected. And according to the Edward Bruce Banning, Göbekli Tepe rather, uh, was a settlement with buildings which high, with high uh, symbolism, but nevertheless domestic in nature. 
this boundary is perceived much stricter today after centuries of secularization and in the Western hemisphere, as well as in some non-Western countries. But Benning's argument uh, emphasized that in-house decorations or wall paintings are demonstrating that the sacred clearly uh, is leaking into the everyday life in the nearest and Neolithic. And therefore a clear distinction is impossible to define. In brief, when we define Gebekli Tepe as a temple, as the first temple of the world, we are projecting our own understanding ancient people might not have accepted this distinction, and it is possible that we have been misreading Gebekli Tepe enclosures. The hypothetical illustration on the right shows a possible reconstruction of a roof made out of wooden beams uh, to cover the enclosures and serve as a domestic place, for example. At first, they were interpreted as unroofed and open to sky, like temples, uh, but right now, this interpretation might be different. Um, in brief, because we have various and diverse interpretations about Göbekli Tepe, I believe that our public outreach uh, should also be designed in a way to provide diverse definitions instead of interpreting or representing only one interpretation. Yet what we see today is either dominated by single interpretation of the first, te first temple of the world narrative or several other uh, pseudo archeological narratives about Göbekli Tepe. To continue with the outreach problem, uh, Although archaeological excavations and scientific research regarding Gebekli Tepe constitutes a major part of academic investigation, I firmly believe that they should be coupled with extensive public outreach activities in order to provide a better understanding regarding the site for all people. Uh, therefore, I shall uh, investigate current trends regarding the outreach uh, and discuss why archaeologists and stakeholders should develop better outreach projects while allowing diverse understandings of neolithization in Anatolia and sedentism in complex communities. As we all know, archaeology has a challenging position to be perceived as a generally interesting field and as many popular magazines, books, and TV shows easily demonstrate this. However, the popular image of archaeology often seems distorted and romanticized by the adventure and the treasure hunt rather than reflecting current research trends and discussions in the field. As an archaeology student, I myself have been exposed to uh, this kind of comments as well. And considering the general interest uh, of Quebec de Tepe, the site has also a very interesting uh, position and it shows rapid changes in the last couple of years, which significantly increased the site's overall popularity, especially in Turkey. In this context, leaving the public interest in archaeological research unaddressed or unanswered creates a gap, and a gap which is subsequently filled by uh, other more willing, more active communicators and dominated with pseudo-archaeological and non-academic narratives. An article of a German Archaeological Institute team written by Jens Nutroff and Oliver Districh uh, successfully investigates the media scope of Göbekli Tepe and categorizes the increasing popularity within the first and second wave periods. They claim that the first wave started around 2007 when Göbekli Tepe started to appear in major journals and magazine covers such as from Science, Smithsonian, Archaeology and National Geographic, some foreign language and English books such as uh, Cygnus Mystery or Magicians of the Gods, along with educational and pseudo-archaeological documentaries, TV shows such as Stories from the Stone Age, Homo Sapiens, The Human Journey, Göbekli Tepe, the, wor the World's First Temple, etc., and several episodes of Ancient Aliens in the History Channel. The second wave also continued with other documentaries such as Human Evolution, Cradle of the Gods, and The Story of the Gods, and the eventual consequences of some highly non-academic and pseudo-archaeological sources led to formation and spread of false narratives about Göbekli Tepe, such as the Garden of Eden, as or inter interstellar visitors. Uh, as a response to that, a website and online blog was launched by German Archaeological Institute as a part of Quebec Tepe project for beating those narratives. It is called the Tepe Telegrams and it aims to fill the gap by providing scientific answers to debated questions. For example, uh, they say that there is no archaeological evidence to show the relation between Quebec Tepe and the biblical Garden of Eden in the website, which was highly searched by the internet visitors. Specific examples of such impact can also be visualized by linking visitor numbers um, to dates and events. According to the authors, the blog apparently is answering a demand for information. There are a couple of noteworthy peaks among the site visits over the past years, and they seem to correlate with topics and debates raising public interest and perception of the archaeological site in particular. One, for instance, will be the air dates of TV shows focusing on archaeological mysteries and the ancient aliens episodes spanning a significant part on Göbekli Tepe, for example, seem to have encouraged people doing all internet-based research on the excavations. 
the audience is mostly coming from English speaking countries in the site, then particularly Western European countries are following in the list. Uh, the website does not provide Turkish option and considering the Turkish public and the oral competency to, to speak English, I believe that many people who cannot speak English will struggle reaching the scientific data in Turkey. Again, it creates a gap and leave room for non-scientific narratives in the context of Turkey, which brought me to uh, the public survey regarding the relationship between public and archaeology in Turkey. And it shows that 37% of population gain knowledge about archaeology through television, followed by museums and internet. The survey also shows that Göbekli Tepe is ranked in the top 10 most known sites in Turkey. On the other hand, Göbekli Tepe has a very interesting position considering the rapid changes in the last couple of years, which significantly increased the site's overall popularity, especially in Turkey. And I personally argue that the sudden increase will create further gap uh, and will be probably filled with pseudo-archaeological narratives for various reasons. Because as part of tourism promotion, the, the government has declared 2019 the year of Göbekli Tepe and planned various activities. It increased overall visibility of the site, uh, as well as uh, the number of the visitors. And we can compare the 2018 and 19 statistics. In 2018, Göbekli Tepe was ranked 19 in uh, Turkey overall. But in one year after Göbekli Tepe and all this promotion, it jumped into the eighth um, position with over uh, 400,000 visitors. Compared to the previous years in the gap, one can see the impact of tourism campaign. When most museums were closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, virtual tours and museums were launched, and it seems that Göbekli Tepe is leading with a significant margin between the rest also in there. This increase brought me to the question, how about the third way after 2018? And we continue to see domination of popular shows and advertisement projects. To start with Rafa Dantaifa to Göbekli Tepe, which is uh, the first animation and the prehistoric marvel, which broke a box office record in the Turkey in animation genre. Production has become the most watched Turkish animation by reaching 2.2 million viewers. On the other hand, The Gift was released as the second Turkish original series on Netflix, it, uh, and it excited Turkish public as the first archaeological science fiction series ever shot in the country, which became a very big hit after, uh, shortly after its release. Both of them were released in the last days of 2019 uh, in December, and one simple Google Trend search shows that how was the impact in general. The animation was local, but the impact of Netflix series can be beyond Turkey as it released in all other countries as well. The Google Trends search shows that Göbekli Tepe reached its peak in, on 29 December 19, uh, 19, 19, uh, 2019, both in Turkey and worldwide, uh, two days after the series was released. Although the animation aims to create a bridge between generations uh, with a cultural bond, cultural bond, I believe that the series was highly pseudo-archaeological and portrayed Göbekli Tepe in the midst of mysterious treasure hunt without specific scientific uh, archaeological interpretations. Another campaign was a merge with the slogan of zero point in time and portraying Göbekli Tepe with uh, the origin of religion. Although it includes uh, archaeological investigations and a digital outreach of the site with a well-designed web page, it still consolidates the narrative of the first temple, which I discussed and criticized in the first half of my presentation. Still, it provides uh, as high quality visual overview uh, to the site, to the online visitors, those of you who are interested in. And lastly, I will talk about the community involvement and development about awareness raising. Uh, according to the latest UNESCO reports, involvement of the local community is already part of continuing excavation and research at Quebec Tepe, uh, which has in turn contributed significantly in the development of uh, the involved community members economically as well as intellectually. But the systematic integration of the local communities and the resulting opportunity for their sustainable development uh, is currently lacking in the Quebec Tepe. And there is a scope for uh, integrating the local community in various other site management activities, such as conservation of the site setting and development of the site, as well as a tourism destination, which I personally believe will contribute a lot to the field, the gap between uh, gap of knowledge uh, with the close communication between archaeologists and surrounding communities, in addition to the digital uh, outreach uh, techniques. In conclusion, we can observe that despite a variety of possibly available sources, this public narrative uh, regarding Göbekli Tepe uh, was basically dominated by pseudo-archaeological interpretations and actual archaeological results and data played only a small role uh, in the public discourse during this period. And real research output had low public visibility and impact. Considering the lack of Turkish resources compared to the English ones, the gap is even bigger 
uh, in the context of Turkey, growing popularity of Gebrekli Tepe in the recent years, both due to the government efforts as well as the outcome of the popular TV shows, widens this gap, which should be filled with uh, relevant resources. This can only be achieved through diverse public outreach strategies and fostering diverse interpretations of the site instead of consolidating the one and most desirable uh, for tourism. The growing popularity and public visibility are not necessarily positive outcomes if they are not accompanied with a comprehensive archaeological understanding, which will help people uh, to understand diverse definitions of Quebec Tepe as a ritual domestic or a boat sites. In the future, both archaeologists and stakeholders should open new dialogue to discuss public outreach uh, at Quebec Tepe to further discuss it, and should consider redesign some of the elements for more informative, diverse, and um, inclusive pub, uh, communication uh, and the public outreach. Uh, 